Hi, everyone. Did you guys like that video? I always wanted to be after Amir Khan once in my life, somewhere. And I didn't know I would check that box today. Uh, it's, it's, a huge, it's a huge honor to be here. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, uh, it's just a huge privilege to represent the Snapdeal team and tell the story of this inc incredible company uh, to, to a bunch of very familiar faces and also some very uh, new friends. Uh, so I'm going to, um, uh, if we can have the, uh, the, the slides uh, come on. Uh, so, uh, you know, just uh, giving a little bit of my background. Uh, so I actually lived in Bay Area, very close to here, um, for about 14 years, and moved to India about a year ago. And it's been an absolute ride of a lifetime uh, to, uh, to be in India during this incredible phase uh, that the country is going through. Uh, and also be uh, a part of this incredible company called Snapdeal. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, we have a very simple vision. Uh, the vision is to uh, be the, the country's most impactful uh, digital commerce system. And, uh, uh, you know, this is, this is quite, uh, quite a tall order. Uh, you know, in, in the 14 years that, uh, that I've worked, uh, do we have the slides here already? If we can just have the... Uh, the PowerPoint, come on. Um, can you? Oh, perfect. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so the basic vision of the company is we want to be uh, the most impactful digital commerce company. And, uh, you know, in the past 14 years, I worked on search, I worked on building an e-commerce business as Airtel, I worked on building mobile apps, and just, uh, just the scale and size of this ambition is quite incredible. And uh, uh, you know, for those, those of you who've sort of uh, followed the company, we're really looking forward to building on the first five years and sort of getting, uh, getting the company to a place uh, where we achieve this vision. Let me see, I... Oh, there you go. Um, so, uh, uh, so this is an excellent start. Let me just step back a bit, right? So uh, I, I want to start, uh, I want to, let, let me just go back one. Uh, so this is actually really interesting, right? So how are we building this digital commerce ecosystem? Um, so we can just go one, one slide back, please. Oh, there you go. So let's just stay there. Um, uh, so India, if for, for those of you who've been tracking this, uh, is an incredibly consumption-led uh, company. And if you sort of look at uh, this, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just going to go one, one back. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so these are some really interesting numbers. The one thing I wanted to call out is today, there are about 100 million active buyers uh, in the Indian ecosystem, right? And uh, this is an incredibly high number, and it's only growing because of the smartphone revolution that's happening in the country. Uh, and I was sort of privy to seeing this firsthand during my time at Bharti Airtel. Uh, but, and, and this will probably be another 200 uh, to 250 million in the next 12 months. Um, but uh, it is a consumption-led economy, uh, right? And, uh, uh, and we have, uh, uh, you know, sort of this plan to drive digital commerce so that there can be inclusive growth uh, in this country. Uh, and uh, uh, how are we going to go about this, right? So, so we've got uh, uh, sort of this incredible digital commerce ecosystem. Uh, you know, it takes uh, uh, a bit to digest the scale of this ecosystem already, and we're just getting started. Uh, so there is marketplaces like Snapdeal and Exclusively, which is a luxury marketplace. Uh, there is also third-party commerce platforms. Uh, we recently acquired a company called FreeCharge, which does for digital goods what Snapdeal does for physical goods. So many of you might uh, remember India's primary a prepaid uh, recharge country. So 95% of telecom subscribers don't have a postpaid account, uh, which is one of the first things you get used to when you move to India. In, in the US, you probably got the opposite where 95% of people have a postpaid account. So they use an app like FreeCharge to actually recharge their prepaid account. And so FreeCharge has about, uh, uh, about 25 million uh, registered customers uh, and is one of the third-party commerce platforms. Similarly, we have a platform called Rupee Power, 
which is a financial services marketplace and a financial services platform. And in addition to these two kinds of platforms, we also are building strategic capabilities, uh, such as uh, you know, uh, a capability called SD+, which is a two-day delivery guarantee, et cetera, et cetera. So if I keep going down uh, 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 this journey, Snapdeal has actually made a huge impact already in the first five years. So if I look on the seller side, uh, we today, I mean, I feel like every time we write these slides, they become a bit dated. Uh, so today we have about 125,000 to 150,000 sellers uh, from about 500 cities. Um, it's absolutely inspiring that about 30% of these sellers are women, and most of them are first-time entrepreneurs who are setting up a business. Uh, and we have about 50 fulfillment centers, and 50% of the orders are delivered through SD+, which guarantees uh, really speedy delivery for the, for the customers. And on the buyer side, again, you know, uh, it's now 12 million products uh, that are available on the site. Uh, about 70% of the orders actually come from tier two and tier three cities as opposed to the metros. Uh, and uh, this is quite incredible that about three fourths of our volume actually come from mobile. Uh, so uh, either mobile web or mobile apps. And we deliver to about 29,000 zip codes uh, within the country, right? So I actually wanted to also step back and talk about two things that uh, are really close to my heart and uh, very important as you guys uh, think about Snapdeal and follow the story. Um, so one is uh, we're an incredibly entrepreneurial company. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and one of the programs that we launched very recently is to try to extend this sense of entrepreneurship to our new engineers who join the company from day one, right? So we call this, uh, call this program the Snapdeal Sorting Hat, right? So fans of Harry Potter probably uh, see a connection, right? So what we do is on the first day that new engineers join our company, uh, we actually have all the directors and VPs and leaders of the company present all the projects that the company is working on, right? So every leader goes on stage and presents their, their uh, uh, area of work. And the, and the engineers get to pick what they want to work on, which is very much like the sorting hat that, you, uh, uh, th that you're used to. Uh, and they get to pick what they're passionate about, as opposed to being assigned a project from day one, right? The other piece that's actually very interesting is, uh, some of you might be wondering, you know, why is Snapdeal in all of these different verticals? Snapdeal, free charge, rupee power, exclusively, et cetera. Our sense is, um, you know, in India, as you know, people get onto a smartphone and they start consuming, they're going to consume a bunch of different categories. And uh, we, call, we call this the string of pearl strategy, where each of the individual apps solve a really important pain point for the user. But together, they got to sort of come together and offer an elegant experience for the user. Um, so, so really, really exciting times. Um, I want to talk a little bit about one of the initiatives that we launched recently, uh, which is a sign of how we are actually willing to disrupt ourselves, right? So uh, for a company at the size of Snapdeal, it's very important to still continue to take risks, uh, to still continue to act as if it's day one, uh, to still sort of get into new categories. So one of the things we found is, you know, a lot of India lives in tier two and tier three cities, and they have huge aspirations. Their dreams are the same dreams that anyone has in any big city, uh, but they have limited access, right? So, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of malls. They don't have more than the basic uh, products and services. And, and, and mobile is going to be a huge growth driver uh, for digital commerce, right? Both selling as well as buying. Uh, and uh, anecdotally speaking, one of the things that we found is uh, for every 10 sellers, uh, 10 people applying to be sellers on Snapdeal, we had to turn away about eight of them because they didn't have the right documentation, they didn't have a tax ID, they didn't have an address, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we actually thought, you know, let's, let's actually use mobile, which is such a huge growth driver for commerce, to enable these 31.1 million small businesses, right? So of these, today only about 40,000 are selling online, right? So this is a huge opportunity to not only bring, bring the organized merchants online, but also the unorganized merchants online, right? And in the process of doing this, uh, Snapdeal is trying to expand into a place where anyone can be a businessman, not just the people who are organized businesses, right? So if you sort of look at this opportunity, 
this is probably a very uh, nice, simple way of looking at the opportunity. Uh, today, you've got you know, companies like Snapdeal and also very successful companies like Flipkart and Amazon in India uh, who are doing fresh, uh, regularly used goods, but as a regulated online marketplace. Right? Uh, by regulated, I don't mean regulated by the government, but just regulated by us as an entity. But there are so many uh, uh, merchants who want to be a part of an open marketplace but sell new things. Right? So about 10 days ago, we actually responded to this opportunity by launching a brand new app, a brand new product called Shopo. Right? Um, so what I want to do is I want you guys to think about what it's like to be a 6,000 employee company in India who's got a good thing going and then having the wherewithal and the risk-taking appetite to try to disrupt your own business, right? So, uh, so I'll tell you a bit about Shopo. Uh, it's a chat, buy, sell uh, use case where anyone can list. It's a completely zero commission marketplace. Uh, you're up and running in about 30 seconds or so. There's no documents required. Uh, and you basically chat uh, between the seller and the buyer uh, to buy or sell something, right? So it's actually incredibly cool, really addictive uh, experience. Uh, and we actually have collections of products uh, around themes. And it's completely hand curated. Uh, uh, each collection is completely hand curated. So that's a, just a very quick overview of Shopo. And like I said, from a seller's perspective, there's a huge amount of convenience, right? They don't have, need to have any documentation. They can be completely up and running really quickly. Uh, they can chat. Uh, they can be right there. They don't need to have a huge amount of uh, overhead, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it's a huge growth opportunity for them, right? For someone who's retired and staying at home, they can start a business from wherever they are without incorporating and creating a business, et cetera. From a buyer perspective, uh, we want them to discover these treasures, these really unique products that may not be sold in the open market. Um, you know, uh, if you sort of go to Shopo, you'll see uh, my favorite is, you know, we have a four-month-old. And my favorite is there is actually a guy who, believe it or not, sells lakdi ki kati, which is wooden train uh, uh, toys, right? So what I've heard in like uh, you know Bollywood songs are actually available as toys to buy for your uh, for, for your kids, and that's absolutely a treasure that's not available in any sort of uh, well-known marketplace, right? So it surfaces these kinds of treasures. Uh, into a marketplace like Shopo, uh, and the buyer can discover amazing new products. Uh, similarly, they can see collections of interesting products as opposed to individual ones that they need to discover. And then, like I said, they can chat and buy. Um, and what we've found is, in addition to the user experience, trust is a really key part of buyers and sellers connecting with each other. And there's nothing better than chatting with a seller directly before you buy. And of course, you know, if, if you live in India, there's always uh, it's always awesome to do a bit of haggling before you buy. So if you're chatting directly with a seller, you can also haggle before you buy. Uh, so, so we actually find that you know, sellers and buyers are latching uh, quite well to it. Um, it's quite incredible that we actually see one listing created every five seconds since we've launched the product the last six weeks ago. So this is actually a real seller on, on uh, Shopo. Uh, uh, Mr. Neil and his wife have started a small business called Indikala which they haven't even incorporated. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, Neil is actually a retired serviceman who's at home, is very ed well educated. Uh, he's got you know, a lot of ability to run this business, but he doesn't want to go through the hassle of incorporation and sort of formally setting things up, et cetera. And he's one of the earliest uh, shop owners who've set up uh, on Shopo. Uh, and we, uh, at this point, have about, uh, I want to say, about 100,000 listings and uh, about 2,000 merchants. And the point I wanted to make is I, don't, uh, I wouldn't be very surprised if we are here next year and we're talking about Shopo being bigger than Snapdeal, right? which, is, which is quite overwhelming and, and uh, quite amazing if you think about it, that we can actually start something now and disrupt a company that's considered to be one of the uh, preeminent internet uh, companies today. So, uh, um, uh, so this is a little bit of the traction that I was telling you about. Uh, like I said, you know, one, uh, one listing created every five seconds or so. Uh, and, and one of the things I wanted to talk about is, uh, you know, uh, creating products in India, right? A lot of you probably wonder what it's like to, you know, uh, compare creating products here in the Bay Area and in the U.S. Uh, with uh, uh, creating products in India. One of the things I've found is um, that the best 
companies that will win uh, wherever they are, whether it's China, India, some other country, have to bring the same aesthetic that Silicon Valley is so renowned for, which is world-class products, right? So uh, I think there was a time when uh, Indian product companies, Indian product designers would almost apologize for their products. I think those days are becoming uh, uh, the past. And uh, so we actually uh, you know, had an 18-member team build Shopo in about 60 days, right? Which is very much like any startup uh, building their MVP here in the Bay Area, right? So uh, we, uh, and actually we believe in this incredible serendipity coming together where, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys like the Amir Khan video at the, at the start of the talk. Uh, so we actually had our VP of marketing uh, go convince Amir Khan to be on this video. Uh, uh, so Amir actually doesn't do uh, commercials. He, I don't think he has done one for over 10 years. And uh, our VP of marketing went and convinced Amir Khan to do this commercial. But he had never ever run a brand campaign, right? So the people who run Coke and Pepsi and GlaxoSmithKline and all these brands were shocked because this first time VP of marketing went and convinced someone who hasn't done a TV commercial uh, for about a decade to do one for Snapdeal. But just talking about the impact that it's having on the country. And this same guy is now running Shopo, right? So, so that was one incredible piece of serendipity that we brought together. Similarly, we actually uh, acquired a company called MartMobi, which had about 15 product and design and engineers, uh, who actually we put to work on Shopo. And then we had also acquired a company called Shopo, who had a bunch of sellers that became a part of Snapdeal. So what is incredible is to, is to fuse this entrepreneurial energy of one incredible leader within the company who goes off and runs this new business, an aqua hire that comes in and builds the product, and a brand that comes in through one of these acquisitions, right? So uh, it's actually quite, uh, quite an addictive amount of energy within the company where you know, these people are sitting and building these incredible products, and this possibility that they could incubate a business that could be bigger than Snapdeal one day uh, is actually quite exciting uh, to all of us within the company. Um, and so what I wanted to share here is uh, you know, that on the day of the launch, Shopper was actually featured in the uh, App Store as one of the newest apps. So this is actually quite incredible, right? So uh, one of the goals of the company is to actually build a, mil uh, build a seller base of a million sellers. Right? So just think about this, right? There are a million entrepreneurs who wouldn't be online if not for this platform. Right? And there are uh, you know, a few businesses that are actually on track to build a 100 crore rupee business a year purely on Snapdeal. Right? They would not exist without this platform. And they're able to build out a 100 crore a year uh, business purely on this platform. Right? And we want to build uh, an overall business with a million businesses online and 10 million listings by December of this year just on Shopo. Right? Uh, and this is part of the larger Snapdeal vision of bringing small, medium, and large businesses online. Um, so this is, the, the Snapdeal story is not purely focused on small merchants and small businesses either. So recently we just announced that Micromax, who is uh, one of the big smartphone makers in the country, uh, sold about half a million of their Canvas Park smartphone uh, in just under two months on the Snapdeal platform. And they made about 250 crore rupees in about this two month period, right? So this is benefiting both small, medium, and large uh, sellers. Uh, and so, uh, so, so that's just a bit about the journey. I'll just, uh, uh, I would have taken a bit more time and, and, and done a demo, but let me just uh, maybe pause at this point uh, and we can take a few questions if there are either questions through the app or uh, anyone over here. Thank you so much and I really enjoyed being here. Thank you, Anand. Very engaging and a lot of audience participation in the Q&A. Uh, one of the things that's trending pretty heavily is around Shopper. It's got everybody interested. Yeah. And two themes to it. Uh, how do you make money with it? And how do you ensure accountability when you have chat, buy and sell, and people bypass you potentially? In Silicon Valley, we're not supposed to talk about making money, right? <laughs> You know, I, I actually started getting on to the HBO show called Silicon Valley in India. And uh, some of the jokes there are just incredible. No, I, I think in all seriousness, we actually feel like uh, 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 a lot of people were actually a bit skeptical if the marketplace would stay 
zero commission permanently, right? So we've actually taken a pledge to keep it zero commission permanently, and we intend to uh, monetize through either promoted listings or advertising. Because if you imagine, you know, if you've got a shop online, at some point you also want to get discovered. So once it takes off and once there is critical mass, uh, there is a lot of options to, you know, either use promoted listings or, you know, I don't need to explain to you, uh, uh, you know, uh, businesses like Google have been very, very successful uh, using a, uh, an ads business. So uh, I think if, once we get critical mass, I think there is just a lot of interesting models that open up. Okay. So back on the core business, uh, different kinds of questions, but all centering on the same theme. And I think it's the result of people observing what's happened to eBay in this country. Yeah. You know, started out great, uh, going through some financial challenges now, and Amazon and others coming into the fray. So when you look at the Indian market and the marketplace there, Flipkart, Amazon India, maybe Alibaba coming in, how do you compete, how do you differentiate yourself, and how do you stick around for the long term? Yeah, so, uh, so I'll, I'll just share a, a funny story, right? So uh, a friend of mine, actually was in the skincare business in India for a long time, uh, right? And, and so we were talking about the concept of category creation. And uh, so he was talking about what it was like to do category creation in the skincare business. So they would apparently go over to women in India, because uh, you know, men in India probably are not great skincare customers. Uh, they would go to women in India and, and just ask them if they knew the difference between three different creams, right? If the, if the lady knew the difference between three different creams, it means that you've created the category in their mind, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's okay if they use a competitive cream, but th the category creation has been done in their mind. I feel like we're in the exact same phase with e-commerce. I don't think you know, we're necessarily in a place where uh, any company that is successful today is gonna be uh, unsuccessful because of competition. I think we're all in a place where we're in category creation mode. Uh, for all the success that these companies have seen, uh, you know, online commerce was only 1% of all commerce in India last year. By comparison, in China, online commerce was 14% of all commerce, right? So uh, I think if you look at the, the work ahead of uh, all of us, I think we really need to expand out the pie, as they say, as opposed to, you know, take share of uh, the pie from each other. So switching from Snapdeal for a minute, since a lot of engineers and entrepreneurs here may want to follow your path about going back to India and getting involved in something or starting something there. Yeah. How did you find your move back to India after 14 years? You just wake up one day and do it. I, I don't think there's anything, there's much more to it. I think you can uh, cook up endless amounts of spreadsheets and pros and cons analysis and like what is, you know, is the Indian company going to match your Silicon Valley salary and you know, pay for your options and all that. But I think you've got to wake up one day and just decide to do it. Okay. So what are the most interesting engineering challenges at Snapdeal? Oh, you know, uh, I'm going to need a lot of time to answer that question. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 this, is, this is actually one of my favorite, favorite areas, right? I think uh, uh, if, if you were inside one of these uh, five or 10 Indian companies that are operating at this kind of scale, Honestly, I, I've not felt much of a difference between being in Silicon Valley and being in India because the scale, the kinds of engineering challenges, uh, the kinds of uh, solutions that are required for users, the kind of user demand. I mean, one of the things that actually struck me is that you know, uh, users are coming online and are getting on smartphones and using many of our products for the first time ever. And you'd imagine their bar for design, their bar for usage, is probably a bit low because they've never used smartphones before. But it's actually the same bar as anyone in the Valley who've probably used iPhones since they first came out, right? Mm -hmm. So the truth is that you don't really get to get away with building you know, half-ass or low-quality products or poorly engineered products because all the, all the demands that users have are actually the same, right? And as sellers come on our platforms, their demands of the platforms are the same. Right? It's not like they say, well, because we're a seller based in India, you only have to give us sort of a half-baked platform, right? So actually, it's quite amazing that uh, uh, the challenges are quite the same. The other thing I would say is, uh, uh, just in terms of what it means for people personally, um, it's a bit like, you know, in the US, you know, a lot of these problems have been solved, 
and you're replicating them in other companies. And one of my friends sort of uh, put it very articulately, which is uh, it's a bit like changing out the curtain drapes and the colors of the carpets, uh, et cetera, of the house. But the house has already been built, right? I think in India, in one of these companies, you're actually building out the sewage and the electricity and the plumbing of the house because there is no house, right? So I think from uh, as people who are you know, incredible product people, engineering people, designers, operations people, business guys, right? Uh, I think the question is which challenge are you really motivated by? Are you motivated by, you know, picking out the curtains and picking out the drapes or building out the sewage and building out the electricity, right? And I'm not saying either is for everybody, but I think you've got to just ask which one of those challenges really motivates you. Okay. Thank you, Aran. In plenty more questions, but we are running out of time. Let's give Aran a big hand. Thank you so much.